is uh, on your front doorstep. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I guess I'll we'll see you back at the office. What you seek is seeking you. What? Jesus. Hell no. Oh my god, we, we did it. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Shut up, Sigmund. Did you say something about an ice wall? Have you not been listening to me? Are those real diplomas you've got up there on the wall? Yes. The ice wall at the end of the earth. At the end of the world, there is this massive ice wall. It is enormously tall and it goes as far as the eye can see what's on the other side of it. Nobody knows because it's a mystery. You mean like Game of Thrones? Yes, exactly. Now, George R. R. Martin, that guy knew his shit. He planted clues all throughout his books about the earth being flat. It is a shame he didn't get to finish them before the show and that because he could have brought the show to its logical conclusion. Clearly, the producers were round earthers. Huh? Do you believe in dragons? That's ridiculous. That's fantasy. Anyway, no one's ever been able to climb the ice wall and see what's on the other side because of the intense cold and red tape. The red tape? Government red tape. The governments of the world have conspired to tie up the edge of the world, Antarctica, in endless red tape. They don't want you to know what the truth is. And what is the truth? The world is flat. Oh my God, I am paying you a lot of money and shouldn't have to sit here and give you science lessons. Of course. What's been going on with you lately? I didn't get the promotion. I'm so sorry. Yeah, they gave it to Jerry. Oh, no. Yeah, I hate that guy. Thinks he's God's gift to the profession. That must be hard for you. I mean, sure, his land rate is higher than mine, as if that's everything. It's not. It's not safe. And that's important. Damn right. Safety is everything. It doesn't matter if you can bring in 30 planes in 30 minutes if it's not safe. That guy, that guy's gonna fuck up one of these days and there's gonna be charred people all over the runway and vultures flying overhead waiting to have a... Oh, um, you can't smoke in here. It must be stressful to be an air traffic controller. Damn straight and at the busiest airport in the world. Safety. It's got to be numero uno. Has Jerry ever actually crashed a plane? No. Have you ever crashed a plane? Never. I mean, fine. There was this one time when I was in the Air Force in Afghanistan and this F-15 went sideways on a C-130, but that wasn't my fault. I was cleared of that at the inquiry. And how many years ago was that? Uh, that must have been like 
15 years ago now. You'd think they'd expunge that from my record, huh? But, what do I do about Jerry? I don't think Jerry's really the problem. Do you? I mean, no, I guess not. But that, that guy, Jerry, I hate him. That guy thinks that he can get in an airplane and just fly east and he'll make it all the way around the world. And everyone knows that's not true. He will fly over the ice wall and that airplane will end up in outer fucking space. So smug with that blonde hair and those straight teeth and the way he makes everyone laugh at me, that guy. How does that make you feel? Oh, it makes me feel terrific when people laugh at me. What, what, what's wrong with you? Is something wrong with you? It makes me feel terrible. I feel like shit. Can you think of another time in your life when you felt that way? What are you getting at? Well, think back to when you were younger, uh, when you had the same feelings you had when Jerry makes all the other air traffic controllers laugh at you. I mean, I guess there was this time when my, my father came to career day and, Oh. In kindergarten. Tell me more about that. Career day. He came to talk about how important his work was. He worked for the Department of Transportation then, and my old man could paint the straightest lines down that highway. Uh, but then he starts telling them how I can't color within the lines. He starts making fun of me in front of everyone. All of these kids are laughing at me now, and that, that was in kindergarten. Is it possible that Jerry reminds you of your dad? Jerry does not remind me of my dad. Does Jerry remind you of anyone else in your past? I mean, maybe this guy Jake. He's another handsome blonde guy. He was from kindergarten. He was really tall for a five-year-old. We both like the same girl, Diane. So one day he gets up to show the whole class his drawing and it's perfect. All the colors are right inside the line, just the way you want it. Then I got up there to show mine and it was all over the place. Just, you know, like my dad said. Needless to say, it was pretty much over as far as my shot with Diane. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, whatever. She ended up giving him a blowjob behind the finger painting easel. <laughs> Your patient sounds like a trip. Rob is a deeply troubled man. His job is so stressful. I mean, uh, it's hard to know how to break through his delusions to help him. Oh, I assume you're telling him to meditate. Of course. He says he meditates daily, but he says he focuses on his breath every time he takes a drag from his cigarette. Hmm, hmm, funny. Delusions about the earth being flat are really powerful. I think it helps him cope with being an air traffic controller and if I could just give him the skills to cope with that, I think his psychological disorder will lessen. Being an idiot is not a psychological disorder. I think I can diagnose my own patient. Thank you. Okay. I thought we were conferring. I'm not conferring. I'm just sharing. Some difference. What's that? Oh, nothing. You're not doing your patient any favor by coddling him, you know? He's just an egomaniac. What would you know about it? Are you diagnosing patients without an examination now, doctor? Hey. I've been doing this for a long time. I am pretty good at reading people, and uh, he sounds like he's a narcissist. Oh, that's rich. You're the narcissist, you. Narcissist? Huh, me? You hawked the whole sofa last night. What's well, my sofa? Then you drank all my bourbon. Well, somebody had to. There was so much dust on that bottle, I thought it belonged to the Adams family. Are you suggesting that I'm a bad housekeeper? I am suggesting that you are a serious goody two-shoes. Oh, I'm surprised you even noticed. What with all your 22-year-old dating app dates? Don't flatter yourself. I notice what's worth noticing. Well, good. 
Wait. What's that supposed to mean? That means whatever you think it means. Great. Great. This was predictable. Your deep-seated annoyance with your colleague has stoked the fires of passion. You hate him so much, you desire him. I know all about transference from reassignment, Sigmund. Not a problem. I thought we were just conferring. <laughs> what am I gonna do with you, Sigmund? <sighs> what am I gonna do about Derek? On the next What's Your Problem? It is these like five giant containers of worms and dirt and garbage. Being clean isn't a problem. Do you think being clean is a problem? Well, no. Of course not. You're lucky you're a bird, Sigmund. You've never had to deal with a deal breaker in a relationship. Stay up to date on all the episodes. Just hit the subscribe button.